Hello, I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE, founder of Silicon Angle Media. I'm here at Palo Alto Studios for CUBE Conversation as a preview for upcoming the CNCF sponsored KubeCon event coming up in Shanghai and in Seattle. I'm here with Jenna Kuo, who's a software engineer at Google and recently named the co-chair of KubeCon, the main event around Kubernetes, multi-cloud, all the things happening in cloud native. Jenna, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So you were recently named co-chair. Um, Kelsey Height uh, was, was previously the co-chair and he's always had those good demos. Um, um, but the program has been changing a lot. You're the new co-chair. Um, what's it like? What's happening? What's the focus this year? What's the content going to look like? Tell us what's happening. So we get a lot of overwhelming number of submissions, much more than last year. And I see a lot of uh, interesting case studies. And also I see that um, because Kubernetes is actually um, help you abstract the infrastructure away and it runs anywhere. So I see a lot of people are actually uh, deploying it everywhere, multi-cloud, hybrid, and even uh, in edge. For example, I see uh, Chief Ole, they, they are going to talk about how they deploy Kubernetes in their edge uh, restaurants and the store owners, they are not tech experts as <laughs> you can expect. Yeah. I mean, that's the edge of the network, a Chick-fil-A. And you know, a great retail example, everyone loves Chick-fil-A, certainly out here in California, it's like in and out Burger, they, they go hand in hand. But this is a good use case of edge. Um, and this is real world. So Kubernetes has certainly grown up. We know from the growth of KubeCon, yeah. the event itself has gotten pretty massive. The number of people involved has been great. How has Kubernetes grown up? Because we're seeing the conversation move from, we love containers, Kubernetes is great for orchestrating everything, mm -hmm. but now people are starting to really start really cranking it up a notch. Yeah. Is that the trend that you're seeing as well? And is that some of the content you'll be focused on? Uh, so I see, I took a look at the a Google trend for search for Kubernetes and it's still going way up since the beginning. And also I look at the, a recent uh, CNCF survey and I realized that about 40% of uh, people who respond to the survey and they work in the enterprise and they said they run Kubernetes in production. So mm -hmm. that's a huge number. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, now that you're the new co-chair, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself. How, what's your background? How did you get there? So um, I, I started um, working at Google in 2015, and that's before Kubernetes was, 1.0 was released, and before CNCF, and before the first KubeCon. And when I joined Ku Google, um, it's, Kubernetes is a way, very new concept, and not, uh, not like it's uh, fixed and it's uh, already adopted by everyone. So we work very hard to get uh, ease of use and get more people adoption and we get a lot of feedback from people. And then um, Kubernetes is getting more and more popular. So um, after that, I decided that I, need, I want to submit my first ever conference talk to KubeCon and then I got selected. And then I started to feel like I enjoy this and I did and other um, CNCF hosted events, for example, a panel in San Francisco. And I think that might be how uh, I was selected. What was your first talk about what, and that you talked about? So I talk about running workloads in Kubernetes and I did an overview of the workloads API because I am the developer of the workloads API. So that's also, you got hooked on Kubernetes like everybody else. It's yeah. like a, the Kubernetes drug. Um, so how did you get involved in open source? Just, were you always developing with open source? How did you get involved in the open source community? Um, so Kubernetes is actually my first open source project. And so um, I, before that, I had a phone call with Tim Hawking. He's the principal engineer at Google and he, sold me the idea of Kubernetes and we need to um, be open and let people choose the best technology for them. And he sold me the idea and I think Kubernetes is the future. And also I, 
I want to work on open source, but I just didn't have the chance to work on it yeah. yet. So we had a good fun time in Copenhagen yeah. uh, for the last KubeCon, and we've, the Cube has been in all the KubeCons, as you know. Uh, we love this community, we think it's really special, not only because we've been there from the beginning, but we've gotten to see the people involved, and the people have been very close-knit, uh, but yet so open mm. and inclusive. Yeah. They're seeing a lot of input, and, and then at the same time, so that's always great, open source, yeah, you know, inclusive and fun. But then the companies are coming in, in, in waves, a massive amount of waves of commercial vendors mm. jumping in. Linux Foundation's done a great job of balancing mm. being a good upstream and good project, but that dynamic is very interesting. It's probably the fastest open source, kind of commercial, yet good vibes, commercial open source. How does that change or affect you guys as you pick and look at the data? Because mm. you get surveys, you see what people want. Mm. Um, vendors, users, industry participants, mm. developers. What is the data telling you? What's, what's all this data coming from the different KubeCons and how is that changing the selections? Mm. And what's the trends? I guess, what's the trends coming from the community? So from selecting talks, because we want to focus on make Kubernetes uh, make KubeCon a still community-focused conference. So when we pick talks, we pick the ones that not just doing vendor pitch or a sales pitch, but we pick the ones that we think the community is going mm -hmm. to benefit from. And especially when they're talking about a solution that others can adopt or is it open source or not, then that uh, affect our um, um, choice. And then, we also see a lot of people start customizing Kubernetes to for their own needs. And um, a lot of people are starting using Kubernetes API mm -hmm. to managing resource outside of Kubernetes. And that's a very interesting trend because uh, with that, you, you, you can have Kubernetes to manage everything, your infrastructure, not, not the things running on Kubernetes. So what are some of those examples that are outside Kubernetes? So for example, you can um, use, so Kubernetes has a concept called custom resource that you can register a custom API mm -hmm. in Kubernetes. And so you can use that, you can register an API and you can implement a controller to manage anything you want. For example, a different, uh, different cloud resources or um, VMs, I, I even saw people use Kubernetes API to manage robots. <laughs> wow, yeah. so this is real world. So you mentioned that you were working on the workload API at Google. Mm. The big trend that we're seeing on theCUBE and that crosses all the different events, not just cloud native, is workload management, managing workloads. Yeah. And workloads are changing and it's very dynamic. It's not a static world anymore. Yeah. So managing workloads to the infrastructure is where we see this nice activity happening from containers, Kubernetes, to service meshes. Yeah. So there's a lot of activity going on there. Yeah. And some of the stuff is straightforward, I won't say straightforward, but containers and Kubernetes is easy to work with. But service meshes are difficult. Yeah. Istio, for instance, Kubeflow or hot projects. There's a real focus of stateless has been there, but stateful mm. is hard. Is there going to be talks about stateful applications? Are you guys looking at some of the Istio? Is service mesh going to be a focus this year? Yeah, we still see a lot of uh, submissions from uh, service meshes. And um, so you can use service mesh to um, manage your service easily and secure them easily. And we also see a lot of talks for stateful workloads. Uh, for example, how you customize something that manage your uh, stateful workloads or, or what are the best practices. And there's a pattern that's um, popular in the community, which is called operator. And the concept is that you write a, a controller, use the custom API that I just mentioned, and you just embed the knowledge of a, a human operator into that con controller mm -hmm. and let the controller do the automation for you. So it's putting intelligence, like an operator, yeah. into the software yeah. and letting that ride. Yeah, and it will do all the work for you and yeah. you only need to write it once. And automation is automation's a big trend. So if you could stack rank the top three trends that we expect to see at, at KubeCon this mm. year, what would they be? 
And the top three, I would say um, customize and multi-cloud and then service mesh or serverless. They're both pretty kind of the same, popular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, is storageless coming? So if we have serverless, will there be storageless? <laughs> <laughs> I made that up, I tweeted that the other day. If the servers, there's no servers, it's going to be on the storage. Yeah, maybe I mean, servers day. and storage go together. So this, again, this is where the fun action is, that the infrastructure is being programmable. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I like about what KubeCon has done is they've really enabled developers mm. to be um, more efficient with DevOps, the DevOps trend, which is the cloud native trend. Yeah. The question I want to ask you specifically is kind of a Google question because I, I think this is important that Google Cloud, um, I really love the trend of how application developers are being modernized. That's so cool, I love that. But the SRE concept that Google, Google pioneered is becoming more of a trend that there's more of an operator role, not in the sense of what we just talked about, mm -hmm. but like an SRE. Businesses are starting to look at that kind of scale out infrastructure mm -hmm where there's a need for kind of like an SRE. Does that come up in KubeCon at all? Or is that more too operator oriented? Is it and, and does that on the agenda? Mm. Does that come up in the KubeCon selection criteria? The notion of having operators or SRE like uh, roles? Um, so we, we have a track taught, called um, operations. Mm -hmm. So some of the operator, uh, I mean the human operator talks mm. are submitting mm -hmm. through that to that topic and um, but we didn't see on um, it might be too early too yeah it might be a little bit too early too that's early. what I think yeah. right, and since I brought up um, some of the tracks um, there's always we're always interested in knowing about startups because mm -hmm. there seems to be a lot of startup activity doing a lot of AI stuff or applications AI ops and there's some new things going on is there a startup activity involved that you're seeing is there is there features of startups at all? Do you guys look at that? Is there going to be an emphasis of, of emerging companies and startups involved, or is it mostly coming from the co companies coming from the community? Uh, we definitely see a lot of startups um, submitting the talks, and also um, you just mentioned machine learning. We also see several um, talks on about machine learning and AI submitting to both. Um, the Shanghai event and Seattle event. So uh, projects like Kubeflow and Spark, that's being used a lot, and we still we see a lot of submissions from so those. That's pop, those are the popular ones. Yeah, popular ones. And also from uh, Shanghai, I saw some AI submissions, mm -hmm. and I'm excited about those. Okay, so now back to the popular question, so everyone wants to know where the popular parties are. Um, what's the popular projects? If you had to, in terms of contributors, activity, do you guys have like a rating, like here's the most popular project? Do you guys look at just number of contributors? How do you rank the popularity of the projects? Mm. Or how would you rank them? I, we so didn't actually look at the popularity of the projects and because are you talking about the CNCF projects or any project in Well, general? CNCF and KubeCon, if I, if I go to, okay, let me ask the question differently. If I go to Shanghai mm -hmm. or Seattle, what's going on? What do, I, what do I engage? What should I pay attention to? What can I expect if I'm a user mm -hmm. and I come to the event? What's going to happen at Shanghai and Seattle? What are the, what's the format? Yeah, so um, we s separate um, all the talks in tracks, so you can look up the track that you are interested in. For example, are you, do you want to know all the case studies? Then you can go to case studies. And if you're interested in observability, then you go to the observability track. And there'll be a lot of different projects. They are presenting their own solutions and you can just go and figure out which one fits you mm -hmm. the best. And yeah. so multi-cloud's hot. I got to ask you the multi-cloud question because one of the things that we're tracking is, what is multi-cloud? And how is that different from hybrid? How would you describe that? Because there are people talk about hybrid cloud all the time, but multi-cloud seems to have different definitions. Is there a different definition to hybrid cloud versus multi-cloud? So I think hybrid uh, includes things um, that, that's not cloud. For example, your on-prem versus mm -hmm. you have your on-prem solution uh, environment and you also use some cloud solutions and that's yeah. hybrid. That's and multi-clouds, multiple yeah, clouds. Yeah, multi-clouds, yeah. So workloads on different clouds or sharing workloads across clouds? Uh, workloads 
on different clouds. Yeah, so Office has 365, that's Azure. Yeah. And then a TensorFlow on Google. Yeah. And something, okay. Yeah, I always want to know, like, if I can run workloads between clouds, that's the, would be the ideal scenario. Yeah. All right, so here's, the, the, here's, the, here's a tough question for you. Okay, I'll put you on the spot here. What is your favorite open source project in the CNCF and favorite track at KubeCon? My favorite project is, of course, Kubernetes. <laughs> And my favorite track it would be case studies because I, I, I care a lot about user experience and I love to hear user stories. And um, for, so for Seattle, we picked a lot of user stories that we think are interesting. And we, we also picked some uh, keynote speakers that they are going to talk about their large scale usage of Kubernetes and that's very mm. exciting for me. I can't wait to hear yeah. their story. Yeah. We love the end user stories too, because it really puts the real world scenario around. Okay, final question for you. Jen, I wanted to ask you about diversity at KubeCon. What's going on and what can you share around that program? Yeah, we care about diversity a lot. We uh, look at that when we select uh, talks to accept. And also we have a diversity uh, scholarship that allows people to apply for uh, scholarship. We'll, we are going to cover the uh, ticket to conference and also the, traf uh, the travel to conference. And also we have a diversity luncheon in December 12th and that's, uh, that will be uh, sponsored by both Google and Hiptail. And so December 12th in Seattle? Yeah, so in, in Seattle. Seattle. And that was a great, by the way, you did a great job last year, the program with the scholarship, got a, I think, standing ovation. So that's awesome. Yeah, Thanks thank for you. doing that. Thanks. For the folks watching that might not be really deep on Kubernetes, in your opinion, mm -hmm. why is Kubernetes so important? And why should IT leaders, developers, and mm -hmm. people in mainstream tech who are now new to Kubernetes and seeing the trends, mm -hmm. why should they pay attention to Kubernetes? What's the relevance? What's the impact? Why should they pay attention to Kubernetes? Because Kubernetes allows you to easily adopt cloud. Because it abstract every infrastructure, the infrastructure level away, and allows you to easily run it, run your infrastructure anywhere. And most importantly, because a lot of people, uh, different cloud mm -hmm. and different uh, stack of de development, for example, CI/CD service mesh, they put a lot of energy to integrate with Kubernetes. So if you have Kubernetes, you have everything. If you have Kubernetes, you have everything. Well, we love the work you're doing. Thanks for co-chairing the KubeCon event. We love going there. CNC has been very successful, been a great relationship. We love working with them. Obviously it's a content rich environment. I think everyone who's interested in cloud native should go to the CNC. There's a lot of um, sponsors and the logos, more and more logos come on every day. So. You guys are doing a good job. Thanks for doing that, appreciate it. Thank you. Maybe we'll do two cubes this year. Jenna Kuo, who's a software engineer at Google, is joining me here in the cube. She's also the co-chair for KubeCon, the event put on by the CNCF and the industry around cloud native and all things Kubernetes multi-cloud and really application workloads for a cloud environment. I'm John Furrier here in the cube studios in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching. <laughs>